Hydraulics! Hello folks, and congratulations on your selection to the Southern Area Engine Academy. This video will serve as a primer to the hydraulics portion of the course. Hydraulics can seem intimidating and complicated, but we're going to take some of the mystique away. And lucky for you, your agency has provided you with a cheat sheet to keep you from looking dumb on the fire line. Your handy dandy IRPG. So let's begin. First, we need our formula. We're looking for PDP, which is pump discharge pressure, which equals NP, or the nozzle pressure of the nozzle, plus FL, the friction loss of the hose light, then plus or minus HP, which is the head pressure of the light. And we'll explain why each one of these is important. Okay, so for the first part of our equation, we have NP, or nozzle pressure. Uh, NP is important simply because that's the uh, pressure we need at the end of the leg to make our nozzle operate correctly. That's the goal. And uh, operating at the right pressure leads to happy firefighters. And we like happy firefighters. So we basically have two different values here. We're going to be running either a Forrester nozzle, which operates at a pressure of 50 PSI, or an adjustable barrel nozzle, which operates at a pressure of 100 PSI. Uh, this is really the first gimme in the equation. Okay, so the next part of our equation, FL, or friction loss. This is the friction loss of the hose light as I go out. This is the part that scares most people. But there's really only two pieces of information that we need. To start off, we need to know the flow, the gallons per minute, the amount of water that we're moving down the, the hose light. And the second piece we need to know is the diameter of the hose that we're pushing the water through. It's really a pretty simple concept. The more water you try to squeeze through a small hole, the more resistance there's going to be, the more friction. And so I'm going to show you how to get those numbers out of the IRPG and how to keep your brains from getting scrambled while you're calculating the friction for these hose legs. So here's our problem. We have 300 feet of inch and a half trunk line going to a lateral of one inch, supplying a one inch adjustable barrel nozzle. Past that, we have another 100 feet of inch and a half trunk supplying another lateral that's 200 feet of one inch hose also with a one inch adjustable barrel and so I'm just going to work this problem out get the friction loss and then we'll go over the rules of thumb later so a couple things that will help your brains uh, keep from getting scrambled are one to always work the problem backwards and then always write out the different sections off to the side so you can visualize it so that lab represents the lateral trunk two represents this section, the second piece of trunk moving from the truck, and trunk one will represent this first trunk, this 300 feet. Uh, that's a different hose diameter. So we said we need to know two things to determine the friction loss, the GPM or the flow and the hose size. So to determine the flow, we look at the nozzle. We've got a one inch adjustable barrel, which flows at 20 GPM. So each of these, they're both one inch adjustable barrels. They'll both flow at 20 gallons per minute. Okay. So as we work back, we want to figure out what the friction loss for this lateral is. So we see we've got 200 feet of one inch hose flowing at 20 GPM. We look at the IRPG, it tells us that we're going to lose 10 pounds of friction loss per section. So we've got 200 feet, that's two sections, each losing 10 PSI, so our lateral is losing 20 PSI. Working our way backwards, we go to the second piece of trunk here. And so trunk two, we see we've got 100 feet of inch and a half hose that's supplying 20 gallons per minute. Looking in the IRPG, we see that 100 feet of inch and a half hose loses one PSI per section at 20 GPM. Now as we go back to trunk one, we have 300 feet of inch and a half. But this section of hose has to supply both nozzles. So 
look, we add those together, we get 40 GPM. Now we don't really have a value for 40 in the IRPG, so we're gonna bump it up to the worst case scenario, which would be 60 gallons per minute. So if we look at inch and a half hose at 60 GPM, we're losing 15 PSI per section. So trunk one is 300 feet, three sections at 15 PSI makes 45 pounds of pressure lost. For a total friction loss of the hose lay of 66 PSI. Now I'm sure you have some questions at this point, so we'll cover the rules of thumb. So we already touched on our first rule of thumb, which is to work the problem backwards. But one question that many of you may have is, why did we only determine the friction loss for this one lateral? What about this guy over here? Well, that takes us to our next rule of thumb, which is that we're only gonna do the friction loss for the worst case lateral. The worst case lateral will be the one that requires the most pressure to operate. Um, in this instance, both of these laterals have the same nozzle on them, which are gonna run at the same pressure and they have the same flow. So the longer lateral is gonna be the worst case. This one is 200 feet long, so it has more friction loss than the shorter lateral. So our next rule of thumb is that the flow for each section is going to be determined by the nozzles that are beyond that point in the hose light. So as we've worked backwards um, from our lateral here, we see um, we have 20 GPM of flow. So for each section of one inch hose, that's 10 PSI of friction loss. Working back, to trunk two, trunk two also only has to supply the one nozzle at 20 GPM. So looking in the IRPG, we see that one and a half inch hose at 20 GPM is only losing one PSI per section of friction loss. Now as we got back to trunk one, trunk one has to supply both these nozzles. So that's 40 gallons per minute that has to go through that piece of hose. Um, in our IRPG, there was not a number for 40. It um, jumped from 30 to 60. So for the sake of the class, we're gonna round it up to uh, the higher number, the 60 GPM, uh, so that everybody comes to the same answer. And at 60 GPM, inch and a half hose was losing 15 pounds of friction loss per section. So as we added it up, we see three sections of 15 pounds, that's how we got our 45 pounds uh, of loss for trunk one. Trunk two was one pound of friction loss, and the lateral was losing 20 pounds for a total friction loss of 66 PSI. And that is the FL component of the equation. Okay, so we are almost there. One more thing. Head pressure. Head pressure is the amount of pressure we have to add to counteract the force of gravity, force of track. So if this hose lay is running, let's say 50 feet uphill, we're gonna have to counteract the effect of gravity wanting to pull that water back down the hill. Uh, the rule of thumb there is that for every two feet of rise or fall equals one pound of pressure that the water's gonna gain as it goes down. So if we're pumping uphill, we're gonna have to add 25 pounds of pressure to counteract the force of gravity trying to pull it back down. Now, if the opposite were true, if this were going 50 feet downhill, we would have to subtract 25 pounds because we'd be picking it up as that water moved its uh, way downhill. So it's pretty simple, two to one. We'll just remember when it's going downhill to subtract and not add. So in this case, we need to add 25 pounds. That will be the HP portion of the formula. And now all we have left is putting it all together. Okay, so we have everything we need. Let's put it all together. So we're looking for our pump discharge pressure. We determine here We've got both these nozzles are one inch adjustable barrels. Looking in the IRPG, the nozzle pressure for the adjustable barrel is 100 pounds. So that's one, 100 PSI, we need to go there. 
Now you may ask if these nozzle pressures are different, which, uh, which nozzle pressure do I put here? And it'll be the nozzle pressure from whichever your highest demand lateral is. Use that one. So the next portion is friction loss. We determined the friction loss for the hose lay was 66 pounds, 66 PSI pressure. The last component, HP, head pressure. We determined with 50 foot uphill that we needed to add an extra 25 pounds of pressure. So we're going to add 25 pounds. Now what will mess some people up when they're writing this down is when the hose lay is going downhill, they'll forget to put a little minus sign here and end up adding that together and it'll make you way off. So in this case, we're going uphill, so we're going to add the 25 pounds. For a total pump discharge pressure of 191 PSI is what we're gonna pump at our truck to ensure that we have happy firefighters at the end of our hose lay. And it's just that easy.